Thank you, Denise, for the lovely prelude. Good morning, everyone. We are pre-recording for our service on Sunday, August 1st. This is Calvary United Church in London. We are recording from our beautiful sanctuary. We are glad that you are watching with us at whichever time that you are able to. We light the Christ candle for the light of Christ in our lives, in our church community, in our world. And as we light the Christ candle, take the light in your life, into your world and all the places that God plants you. This morning we are mindful as we acknowledge our sacred space that we as Canadians, we in the, are mindful of the history, of the present, and of the future. We are mindful of many discoveries, and many discoveries yet to be remained, yet to be found. And so with compassion and humility, we acknowledge that our sacred space is found on the indigenous territories of the Atawandron, the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people. With thankfulness and respect for their stewardship of creation, we seek to live in right relations with all. Amen. For our announcements this morning, I probably should tell you I'm Reverend Susan Cameron. Our participants today are Denise Young, on piano, our singers who right now are hidden behind the most amazing, beautiful quilts of Lynn Dandy on the communion table and behind our choir who are tucked away are Katie Farrow, Brian McNichol, Ruthann McLegan, and Jim Hibbert. We thank Jim for his organ solo this morning and recording our service, Mary Margaret Farrow and Ken McLagan. Check our weekly Tuesday emails for details on how to connect to our Sunday worship services in August. All the summer, the summer services will be pre-recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. With the exception of when I'm on vacation, I'm on vacation August 9th to the 23rd. For those two Sundays, August 15th and 22nd, there will be a list of church services to visit on our Tuesday email. And we will also post who is covering for me for pastoral emergencies. Let us be gathered into worship. Let us come into God's presence to focus on holy things. In our worship, may we be renewed, encouraged, and comforted. In the presence of God, we come humbly, respectfully, gladly, and openly. Surrounded by God's love, we come to offer our praise and our thanks. Our opening hymn is a beautiful hymn, Imagine Ireland, as you hear, Spirit open my heart.
the choir. Thank you. We join our lives in many ways, but especially as Christians, we join our lives when we pray. Let us pray together. Loving and faithful spirit, the God in whom we live and move and have our being, hear our prayer. You are the God who is made known to us in Christ Jesus. Bless us as we wait on you this day. Please remove from our minds and hearts whatever impediments hinder worship or dampen joy. Increase within us that holy longing for closeness which can open our lives to fuller delight and to a deeper commitment. May our hymns and prayers, our searching thoughts, and our hearing of scripture be an exercise in our holy loving, by you and for you. May our lives publish your praise. In the name of Jesus we pray. This morning, we're really um, pleased and um, being very gifted that um, Jim Hibbert is playing for us an organ solo. My faith looks up to be to the, my faith looks up to be by Floors Peter Peters, and I have never heard Jim play live in a sanctuary. We have always been recorded, so this is a special blessing for us this morning.
Thank you, Jim. That was wonderful. And it's wonderful to hear the pipes. I'm, that's what I'm hearing them right, right back. It's amazing to hear the pipes. Our scriptures this morning are Psalm 46, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 11, and then Genesis 28, 1 through 5. And if you're wondering, does she have a pink Bible? She does. Uh, it's from my gift, my um, friend Kate Monk, who is doing the licensed, is a, now a licensed lay worship leader from Thames United in Fullerton. She lent it to me once and I really liked it, and she said, well, keep borrowing it. And then finally, she just gave it to me. So I owe her a Bible. It's the New International Version, and the lovely title is called The Power of a Praying Woman Bible. Listen first to Psalm 46, the most famous verse from this psalm is Psalm 10. Many hymns and many prayers have been written from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, and the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in an uproar, kingdoms fall. God lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This ends the reading from Psalms. 46. And now we turn to Genesis, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 5 and 10 to 22. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him and commanded him, Do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to Padam Aram to the house of your mother's father, Bethuel. Take a wife for yourself there, from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. May he give you and your descendants the blessings given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land where you now live as an alien the land God gave to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way, and he went to Padam Aram, to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Aramean, the brother of Re Rebekah, who was the mother of Jacob and Esau. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of his stones there, he put his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a staircase resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. 
I am with you and will watch you, watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob woke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next day, the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I may return safely to my father's house. Then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. This ends the reading from Genesis, chapter 28, verses 1 through 5 and 10 through 22. We give thanks for the word of God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts gathered here this day and listening be acceptable unto you, O Lord, who is our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As you hear the scripture this morning, are you thinking, are you wondering, am I a dreamer? The Bible has many stories of dreamers and dreams. The dreams include Jacob, Joseph, Pharaoh, his butler and his baker, Solomon, Daniel, Jesus' father, Joseph, the Magi, Peter and Cornelius, even Pilate's wife. Their dreams are a way for God to send a message to send instructions, to send directions. It's good news to hear that God uses dreams to reach us. It's good to pause and consider, what is God saying to you lately in your dreams? What will we learn from Jacob and his dream this morning? First, let's do a bit of a refresher on what's happening with Jacob. Jacob is a man on the run. He has done nasty things with his twin brother Esau and to their father Isaac. Jacob has survived by being cunning. He's cheated Esau twice. Rebekah, his mother, has covered up for him. When Esau is going to kill Jacob, Rebekah makes excuses and convinces Isaac to send Jacob away and find a wife. Jacob is between a place where he is no longer welcome and a place He's never been. He's guilty, but he's, and he's defenseless, and he's afraid. He's in the hill country north of Beersheba on his way to Haran and to his uncle Laban. He stops to rest. He uses a stone for a pillow, which seems odd to us, I know, but that's what the biblical story tells us. He does. And Jacob's dreams aren't tossing and turning and not even being able to go to sleep. Instead, he dreams of a stairway going between heaven and the earth. The top reaches to heaven and the angel of God, the angels of God are ascending and descending. The ladder or stairway or ramp as it's called has angels, has messengers of God moving back and forth. And this is special. Think about that. God turns an ordinary stone into something special with God's presence. God's alternate reality breaks into Jacob's fear and desperation for what Jacob has done to his father, his brother, his mother. He deserves sleepless nights, but instead he receives an important message. The point is what God says to Jacob in his dream. The Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the 
God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie is going to be yours and your offspring. Can we pause for a moment and hear, if you remember nothing else of the sermon this morning, Jacob's life is a mess. His life is a mess and God still comes to him in dreams and says, I am with you, you are not alone. Think about that. Think about how God stands beside us. Be encouraged through this passage to think about how God stands beside us in wonderful times and in difficult times and in the middle. Be encouraged to think about how God comes to you in dreams when our lives are less than perfect, like Jacob. Continue to be encouraged because God goes on to say to Jacob, I am with you and I will keep you. I will not leave you until I have done all that I have promised. God makes promises to Jacob for a lifetime. God makes promises to you for a lifetime to be with you. God didn't give up on Jacob. God is not going to give up on us. God is going to stick with Jacob until the promises are kept. We may have expected wrath. Jacob would have expected wrath. Instead, he gets a dream and he gets promises. Jacob's story reminds us God comes to us in grace, not wrath or judgment that is unexplained. God gives us what we need, not what we deserve. It is God's gift. God promises to be with us wherever we go and remain faithful. What is our response? What is our response? Jacob wakes up, wakes up physically and spiritually and says, surely God is in this place and I didn't know it. Jacob discovers God was closer than he ever imagined. Jacob shows us about our need for solitude, to have those times when we are alone like he was, sleeping outside with a rock for a pillow, that there are times in our lives we need to step apart so we also can realize, surely God is in this place, and I did not imagine it. God offers grace and unconditional love can we be the top, take the time to rest, to be still, to dream, to not be on the run, and move closer to God and realize God is in our lives and we did not know it? Can we look for ladders? Can we look for connections to God in our dreams? In may, paying attention to the angel ladder connection, we are in touch with our world, with the people around us deeper and more intentionally. In paying attention to angel ladders, to connections that are happening in our lives that bring us closer to God, make us more aware of God, then we can see all those possibilities. There are lots of apps on our phones, books, special pillows, night lights, window shades to try to help us sleep. But you know what else works? Scripture. Take a phrase, read it, repeat it, go slowly with the words, and let them soothe you. So for example, with Psalm 46, verse 10, as you rest tonight, try this. Say first, be still and know that I am God. And then say, be still and know that I am. And then be still and know. Be still and be. Let scripture calm your heart and your mind so you can hear, surely God is in this place. And I did not know it. God offers grace. Jacob says, how awesome is this place? He didn't have all the answers, but he knew how awesome was the place. Wouldn't the story have been great if it ended that way? Jacob saying, it's all good, I'm moving forward. But instead, Joseph responds to God's unconditional love and promises of blessings with a completely conditional promise of his own. He says, if God will do this and this for me, then I will give up 
10% of what I have. Jacob really does a line like the movie we know, show me the money. No wonder later we're going to hear about Jacob wrestling with an angel because he still doesn't quite get all that God is offering for him. This is a story of God who sticks with Jacob and his brood. Can we think about night visitors in our dreams and how they lead us to God's purpose in our life? Jesus is God's ultimate proof that God is with us, never gives up on us, and we are always with God. God is with us when we have a pillow for a rock, when it's a soft pillowcase at all times in our lives. There are famous hymns that go with these pieces of scripture. Near my God to thee, we hear all the verses of this story. The hymn is based around the Genesis 28. The other piece of music that's famous for this piece is Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder was written somewhere between 1790 and 1825. When you look at the history, it reminds us again about the history of slave spirituals that the hymn was sung as a way of talking and communicating in the fields where singing wasn't alive. The historians write that this spiritual reminded people that God was always with them as God was always with Jacob. Climbing the ladder as it's sung in the spirituals refers to their, their tests, their trials, all of the things that weigh heavily on, on the slaves at that time. The image of warrior was taken from scripture. The traditional lyrics hold out the hope that the slave can rise up and escape slavery. When the hymn is sung with call and response, the writers tell us it's both the singing respondent and the listener hearing for greater sacrifice that will happen. But also there were clues about literally they would slip in little clues about where they were going next. The song became the first African-American spiritual to be sung by white Christians, ironically. The song has been used as well to support efforts of justice and peace, made famous by Pete Senior and Bruce Springsteen. They sometimes change the words from soldier to brother and sisters. As we think about Jacob's ladder, how are we climbing Jacob's ladder? How are we trying to connect with God? If we consider how the hymn was understood as a slave spiritual, what are we striving for in our lives? What are we seeking? And remember the lesson from God, the lesson from God to Jacob, the lesson from God to us through that angel connection. And look for the angel connections in your lives is God is always with us. The hymn, the words of the hymn are, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldier of the cross. Every rung goes higher, higher. Every rung goes higher, higher. Every rung goes higher, higher, brothers and sisters all. Sinner, do you love my Jesus? Sinner, do you love my Jesus? Sinner, do you love my Jesus? Soldier of the cross. And the last verse. If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not serve him? Soldiers of the cross. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for Jacob's story, for the words from the song. Help us to look for angel connections. Help us to look for the ways that God comes into our lives and leads us. Leads us and brings us promises of grace. Amen. We listen to the words of our creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, 
to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, and to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. We are grateful for all of your gifts to Calvary United Church. Monetary, monetary gifts and gifts of your time, treasure, and talent. They are so appreciated. Many, many thanks. We turn to the prayers of the people. Lord, we lift up to you our prayers. We know that you hear them spoken and unspoken. We know as you talked and visited Jacob long ago, so you talk and visit with us in our dreams and our lives. Help us in all compassion, humility, and seeking justice. Lift up our prayers. We pray for those who are ill, for those who mourn this day. We pray for our indigenous, indigenous brothers and sisters across our land in this time. We pray for all first responders. And now, Lord, in silence, we lift up to you these, our prayers. Lord, who these are prayers, and in your love answer. Together we pray as Jesus has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn is Nearer My God to Thee, as we hear Jacob's story again for the hymn.
May the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all whom you